The Justice League will not stay dead and Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. In fact, I am very much convinced we didn't even kill the quote unquote real Justice League. At least our version of the Justice League and let me explain. So first of all, there's been a lot of speculation on the internet that the League isn't dead or won't stay dead. Go watch Comic Storian's video on it. He made an awesome video talking about the theory so I recommend watching that first. But I wanted to make my own video too since I have some new points I wanted to bring up and maybe some new theories as well. So the current theory right now is that the Justice League we fight are clones. Brainiac made alternate versions of the Justice League and those are the people we fight. There's a lot of evidence to support it and we'll get into that. However, I have a theory that the Justice League we fight can possibly be from another universe. This can be possible because spoilers for the game, if you click the video I assume you don't care but yeah spoiler warning, the Brainiac we fight here is a part of a hive mind. So he's a part of 13 different Brainiacs, pretty much. It's revealed he destroyed Lex 2's universe, and he killed everyone there, and his bio in the game confirms this that he has a hive mind of, I guess, 12 other Brainiacs that all work in conjunction in the multiverse. It's kind of confusing, and it's not really well explained. I had to go ask on Twitter, the Suicide Squad Discord, on YouTube comments to try and make sure I got that right, but it looks like this Brainiac might be one of 13 parts of a multiverse hive mind Brainiac. It's confusing, like I said, but that's pretty much what's going on. But even if I'm wrong and this Brainiac we fight is from our Earth, he still went to Earth 2 and killed everyone there. So my theory is that maybe the Justice League we fight and kill is from another universe. There are some road bumps to explain like Wonder Woman, but the video will cross that bridge when it gets to it. Now, this theory might be less likely, and I think it's more than likely that we actually fight clones like Comic Story and Suggested. But what I believe is the Justice League will come back to life. Superheroes never stay dead, right? In a comic book world, they never stay dead, not really, so they are going to come back to life, I'm really convinced they will be. But how they will come back to life, I think is one of these three options. One, they're clones that we fight in the game, so we never actually kill them. Two, they're from an alternate universe. And three, we kill the actual Justice League and they'll be resurrected and brought back to life. Let's just break down the evidence and see what we come up with. So the first piece of evidence is that we see in the game that Flash gets his finger cut off by Captain Boomerang, as you can see here. However, as we see when we meet Evil Flash later on, his finger is there. It's not cut off. Some people can think this is just a mess up by Rock City, but if Rock City is known for one thing, it's their attention to detail and giving clues. Like the Clayface clues in Arkham City, or like Joker moving the gun in Arkham Knight to let you know Oracle never died, that kind of thing. So his finger being back here is possibly a very subtle way of telling us this isn't the same Flash we see in the beginning that saves us from evil Green Lantern. Now, I wanted to bring up this scene. The scene where Wonder Woman saves the squad from being killed by Flash and lassos him. She asks Barry how to stop all this and we see here that Barry's eyes are back to normal. They're not purple and evil looking. And he tells Diana that she has to kill them to save the world. So this is where things can get messy because if this is a Flash evil clone, would said clone have a quote unquote good version inside it like we see here where the lasso can bring out that good part? Or is this clone that Brainiac makes just pure evil? So this is the roadblock I come at because if this is a clone of Flash, then yeah, maybe the clone can also momentarily turn good as well with the lasso of truth like we see here. But maybe not, it just seems weird. I mean at the end of the day, clones are clones, right? But when I think of making an evil version of a Justice League member, I can't imagine that the clone can become a good guy too because then there's just like two good Barry Allens running around possibly. So that's my thought process there, but it could still possibly be a clone. But also, we could have fought in another universe's Flash, maybe Earth 2's Flash, because when I see this scene, it could be more than likely that this Barry was taken from Earth 2. And remember, at the end of the day, Brainiac is known to be a villain to like collect various cities, maybe people, and things of that nature to increase his knowledge and restore his planet in some iterations, like this game. So what if he's collecting the Justice League from other universes? Because think about it, why kill Earth 2's Justice League, but then keep Earth 1's Justice League and make them clones? Why not just do that on Earth 2? He might be collecting the Justice League from other worlds. It's possible, like I said, Brainiac collects for his knowledge. His goals seem to be slightly tweaked in this game in this version of him, but that's still a prominent character trait of his. Lex Luthor of Earth 2 talks about how the DNA is altered among these heroes, so that can definitely point to them being clones, but it could also be like they're in another universe so their DNA is slightly different. And another thing with Flash, once we kill him, Brainiac sucks him back into the ship, which is really telling. Why would he do that? Because he's not done with the Flash. And another thing here, if we're fighting alternate universe versions of the League, 
then where is the evil Flash and evil Wonder Woman from the other universe? Because by my logic, we should see them early on with the other evil League members, right? Well, I think that maybe Brainiac didn't want to reveal them until he's captured the Earth of this game's League members first. And plus, it would reveal the story way too early if they went on with that theory, right? So, yeah, that's my thought process there. And with Wonder Woman, she never gets captured by Brainiac, so we never see an evil Wonder Woman because Brainiac, once again, didn't want to reveal an alternate universe Wonder Woman if you didn't catch this universe's Wonder Woman, if that makes sense. Moving on, though, let's discuss Green Lantern, because with Green Lantern, there's a lot of weird decisions they made with his death. So, if you didn't know, a huge thing about the lantern rings is that once the owner dies, the ring flies off his body and seeks out the next closest person who's worthy of the ring. That's generally how it works. There's decades of Green Lantern lore, so keep that in mind, it could definitely be different. In this game though, the ring doesn't fly off John when he dies, and King Shark is able to put it on his finger and just use it to create a giant shark to break Brainiac's shield. So, while this is a pretty funny scene, people were kind of mad because it kind of just throws the lantern lore out the window. But this may have been intentional. The ring worked the way it did for a few possible reasons. Maybe if we fought another universe's Green Lantern, then that means the ring has different rules from there. Or Brainiac just made a clone of this universe's Green Lantern and altered the ring with this technology to be able to be used with an evil Jon Stewart. Or this is the real Lantern and we just resurrect him later on. There's a lot of ways this can go. If this Green Lantern isn't from another world, then there's no way the ring isn't altered in some way. And I hope they explain that if GL does come back to life in a DLC, because if they don't, then wow, like, right? Like, they just said F the Green Lantern lore, even though this is kind of awesome to see. And Green Lantern also gets sucked back into the ship. Every hero that dies except Diana, obviously, because she was different, gets sucked back into the ship. Now, let's talk about the Superman scene. So, Superman is introduced when he stops the bomb from entering Metropolis and proceeds to get into a fight with Wonder Woman. Superman, during this entire time, doesn't talk. Like, at all. That stuck out to me. It's like the Superman has been altered, so maybe he can't speak yet because he's not a completely finished clone, maybe? Or maybe it's an alternate universe Superman that's still undergoing the mind control stuff? Who knows? Also, Wonder Woman stabs him with a big chunk of kryptonite, and Superman is able to take it and kill Wonder Woman with his powerful laser vision. So here's the thing. A little bit of kryptonite can stop Clark. A big chunk of kryptonite like this stabbed near where his heart is, a lot of supermans would probably die here. But this one lives. Wonder Woman even comments on it saying it should have killed him. It should have killed him. That's not a throwaway line. They intentionally put that in there and with it not being touched on again for the rest of the story, it looks like it'll play a factor in the DLC. This clue here kind of hints more towards that they're either clones or they're actually genetically altered versions of the real Justice League and they'll be resurrected back to life later on. Superman even flies back to the Skull ship because he needs to fix himself up, so to speak, with the damage he took, as if Brainiac is going to modify him again. It's interesting. The next person I wanted to talk about is Batman. Now, Batman is kind of a unique situation because if this is the same Arkham Batman from the Arkham games, then it's very inconsistent. The Arkham Batman would not lose in the way he did in this game. Which makes me think one of two things. One, this is a clone or alternate universe Batman. Or two, it's just poor writing and Arkham Batman lost in a way he definitely should not have. The Batman here talks differently from Arkham Batman. Again, maybe it's just bad writing or maybe it's a clue. Also, I just want to throw this in here. This Batman says he killed the Joker. Likely just something he used to taunt Harley, but what if this is an alternate reality Batman that killed his Joker? Pretty unlikely, but something to note. And honestly... Batman is a big reason as to why I hope the Justice League are either clones or alternate universe versions because at least that way, these inconsistencies can be kind of explained, right? Like maybe this Batman lost because the clones or alternate universe versions aren't nearly as strong or competent. Like why did Flash not instantly run through the squad killing them when he had the chance or Superman, why didn't he just run through them and turn them into dusts of nothing or just fly away and shoot lasers at them? The reason could be that these versions of the League members whatever or whoever they are, just aren't as smart or competent, I guess. And after Batman dies, it's a blink and you'll miss it kind of thing, but Batman does get sucked into Brainiac's ship as well. And for Superman, he dies right after, and he also gets sucked back into the ship. So as we see, all the members of the Justice League, except for Wonder Woman, get sucked back into the ship. After this, we get a scene with Brainiac taking over the squad, and it's here that Brainiac mentions that his takeover will be a constant variable in every universe. Invasion. I'm making it 
universal constant. And then he asks the squad, how did they kill his Justice League? How did you defeat my Justice League? His may be meaning a different universe's league, but it begs the question, why did he keep this universe's league around and kill other league members, right? Is there a reason for that, or is he collecting all the league members from other universes? Or is it like he takes them over and once he's done with said universe, he kills the league members and that's what happened to other universes. And since he didn't take over this Earth's universe in this game, the league members are still alive. That is pretty confusing. Hopefully I kind of made sense there, but yeah, there you go. Also in this scene, you see multiple different pods in the background. It's theorized that maybe the league are in these kind of pods being held like in a frozen state. Brainiac does use these things to hold creatures that he has created, so what if he's holding the league in these pods as well? These 13 Brainiacs in the multiverse are all in a hive mind. Maybe they're all collecting their universe's league members, who knows? But the idea of them being alternate universe league members might be too convoluted or complicated, and it's more than likely that they're either clones, or we killed the real Justice League and they will be resurrected back to life. I really hope it's not the latter where we actually kill the real Justice League versions because it would be an inconsistent version of the League members. I don't want to believe that this is the true Arkham Batman because he wouldn't talk and lose like this, in my opinion. So yeah, maybe Rock City can write a good plotline for the DLC when it drops with the League coming back, but it's very crucial that they do write a well-written story. As for Wonder Woman, they can write a way to bring her back, just remake her back from Clay again or something. I'm sure they'll figure out a way to bring her back because again, comic book magic, superheroes don't stay dead, that kind of thing. Ultimately, I think them being clones or alternate universe versions is the way to go, but maybe we just actually killed the real Justice League members and we're just bringing them back to life, which I hope we don't do that. I just don't like that idea. But yes, I do think the League will come back to life. The question more so is how will they execute it because the way they do it is really important. No matter how they do it though, people are going to complain saying, oh, they just went back and brought them back to life for damage control, blah, blah, blah. But I have a feeling they're always going to bring them back. We just have to see. I just hope their alternate universe versions are clones of an incompetent Justice League or, you know, something like that. And if it's written well, I may have to apologize for my Batman rant video. Maybe. Damage was probably already done, but it depends on the DLC. We'll just have to wait and see. But what do you think? How do you want the Justice League to come back? And do you think anything about what I said made sense? Let me know. And as always, any support in the video is really appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and uh, peace.